coming up on the second half of First at Four, hundreds gather for a meeting involving health care and addiction recovery in Knox County. And it's day two of the girls Sweet 16 State Tournament. We'll have an update from Lexington. And showers are back as we head through tonight and tomorrow when some sunshine returns as well. Coming up as First at Four continues right now. Mountain News First at Four continues. Addiction recovery specialists gathered in Barberville today to discuss their fight against the opioid epidemic. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox is at Union College with more on the event that drew hundreds. Frightening statistics started a very serious conference. Organization representatives express why they think action has to be taken now. Operation Unite's Nancy Hale started off the conference quoting CDC reports saying deadly overdoses in Kentucky increased by 15 percent last year. That number is one of the many reasons why specialists have gathered. Union College President Marcia Hawkins says their own experiences made hosting this event crucial. Part of our mission is uh, to support the health and economic growth of our region. So what that means to us uh, is what, what are the big issues and how can we train people, educate people, host events. Access to treatment and lending a helping hand have been talking points throughout the day. Some have even shared their stories of battling addiction. In Barville, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Organizations also advocated for more intentionality with second chance careers for people overcoming addiction. We'll have more from Barberville tonight at 6. The opioid epidemic continues to cause problems across the United States. and In Kentucky, fentanyl is responsible for thousands of overdose deaths. House Bill 353 passed in the House yesterday. That bill would exclude some testing equipment like fentanyl strips from being considered drug paraphernalia. 353 seeks to solve the problem of um, our, currently our fentanyl test strips fall under our paraphernalia statute. And we just don't want people who are using them and trying to save their lives to be arrested. The 2021 Kentucky overdose fatality report says fentanyl was in nearly 73% of overdose deaths. We'll have more about this coming up at 530. One Pike County business is moving its focus from pets to people, all in preparation for prom. Valley Veterinary Clinic owner Dr. Whitney Roth says her new outreach began when looking for homecoming dresses for her daughter, finding a website with deals she could not pass up. So she decided to stock up, but not for herself. She started a closet for the students in the community who may need a new outfit for a prom night out. We just thought, gosh, what a great way this would be to maybe sponsor a prom dress for somebody who um, maybe their family was having a hard time financially, maybe because of the flood or just because the economy's tight right now. The dress collection is expanding with community members donating what they can to help. We'll have more about the mission coming up tonight at 6. Quite warm, the name of the game out there today. We've seen the clouds and we've also seen the mild temperatures in many spots. Here's the view from downtown Somerset right now. All is quiet. Just saw some folks out there taking a walk. Not a bad day for a walk outside. 63 the reading there. We are continuing to watch the clouds increase as we head into tonight. The view from Buffalo Mountain obscuring the sun at this point. Temperatures middle and upper 60s. The further south and east or south and west that you go. And that's where we're starting to see some milder air. We're talking 10 to 15 degrees warmer, even close to 20 degrees warmer than this time yesterday. As we head through tonight, though, we'll keep the milder weather going. We should be about 55 for daytime highs this time of year. Temperatures slowly drop as we fall into a rainy pattern in the nighttime hours. Details on how long that rain sticks around in a few minutes. Steve. All right, thank you, Evan. The KHSA Girls Sweet 16 continued this morning from Rupp Arena, and one more of our mountain teams still had to take the court. WYMP Sports Director John Lowe joins us now with those highlights. John. Thanks, Steve. No team in the Girls Sweet 16 has had quite the journey the Not Central Lady Patriots have had from a rocky start on and off the court, all to win the 14th region crown. Their reward? 
a date with Ashlyn in the first round of the Sweet 16. Now the kittens would be the ones to hit the ground scratching. Kenley Woods takes it up to the rim right here for the easy bucket. Pat, they're trying to get some action, but the loose ball was grabbed by Jenna Delaney of Ashland. Passes to Ella Sellers, and she reaches for the jumper right there. KCC shut out in the first quarter, but they get on the board with who else? Kylie Gayhart. She will pull up for the three right there from the right wing and sink it. Ashland up 21 to six at the half. Woods here charging down the lane for another Ashland basket right there, but shots will start to fall for the Patriots here. Only one of 18 in the first half. Kylie Gayhart goes to Lacey Hall and Faith Pollard will seal the deal for the triple from the corner. They're loving it on the not central bench. Gayhart to Hall for another bucket, little jumper right there, but it was too little too late. Ashland too big for the Pats to rally past. They fall at Rupp Arena, 46 to 34. Courtney Lane Brewer has more from Rupp. Not Central battled in the final minutes of their first round game here at Rupp Arena, but it was too little too late to get past an Ashland team that got ahead early. It was a slow start for both teams, just 27 points on the board at halftime. Not Central went from 1 of 18 from the field in the first half to 11 of 20 in the second. The Lady Pats fell in the end 46 to 34, but remember this was a team that nearly didn't have a court. All year KCC has had to fight and this afternoon was no different. You know, I was proud of the way the girls fought. Um, you know, that's kind of what we that's kind of what we've been all year. We've dug a little hole at times and then and just fought really hard to get back in games and uh, we've won a lot of games that way and it just didn't happen today, but uh, And how about coach Ambergy? He told us that he took over the girls program at Not Central because he felt it was the right thing to do. And now here he is leading his team to end their season on the state's biggest stage. In Lexington, I'm Courtney Lane Brewer. Back to you. All right, Courtney, thanks. The Lady Pats wrap up their season at 23 and 10, a great year that we'll certainly remember for decades. Now, the North Laurel Lady Jags are still in the tournament. They'll play George Rogers Clark tomorrow in tomorrow's quarterfinals. And we do know that Laurel County has canceled school so they can go to that. So tip set for 130 and we'll have full coverage then. Steve. The girls Sweet 16 State Tournament in sports coming up at 530 and 6. Well, Russia leveling up their war in Ukraine with an overnight barrage of missile strikes. Well beyond the Eastern Front, Russian rockets are said to have rained down as far west as Liv near the Polish border. The escalation could signal Russia's frustration with a slow moving ground war and knowing that Ukraine is reaching out to Western allies for aircraft, weaponry and training. But will the U.S. get involved at that level? CNN's Chris Wynn has the latest. In Ukraine, Russia launching one of its biggest aerial assaults Thursday. Ukrainian officials counting 81 missiles targeting critical and civilian infrastructure across the country, killing at least 11 people. This was a sizable set of airstrikes with a mix of, of platforms. The large-scale attack, including the rare use of six Kinzel hypersonic missiles, which eluded Kyiv's air defenses. These jet-fired missiles have a longer range, as well as the ability to attack from multiple directions. Their use could signal a shift in Russian strategy, as the U.S. is questioned about how it will support Ukraine moving forward. There's no plans to train Ukrainian pilots right now on the F-16. It's air defense, it's armor, it's artillery, and it's ammunition. And that's what we're focused on providing them. But in the western city of Lviv, far from the front lines of the war, rescuers continue to search for victims after three residential buildings were destroyed. The Russian Ministry of Defense says the strikes were retaliation for an alleged incursion last week by a pro-Ukrainian armed group in Russia's Bryansk region. A local official says two civilians were killed, but Ukraine denies any involvement, and CNN can't confirm Russia's claims. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says he has no plans to meet with Russia's president anytime soon. We have to concentrate uh, strength and forces and new weaponry from our partners in order to conduct our counter-offensive operation. I'm Chris Wynn reporting. The Biden administration is requesting $842 billion in its 2024 budget. That's a $26 billion increase compared to last year with an emphasis on countering China and assisting Ukraine. Taking on climate change one plate at a time. More on the movement to eat less meat coming up.
and showers roam back into the region as we head into tonight. The details in a few.